Welcome to CBT Nuggets. My name is Brian Alderman, and I'm excited to be spending some time with you discussing dynamic CRM customization and configuration. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. As I go through the course, I might say customization. I might say configuration. I quite honestly use them interchangeably because if you configure something, you change the behavior or you change the look, feel, smell, or taste. Same as you would if you customize something. So you're going to hear me say customize, and you're going to hear me say configuration. Just remember... It depends on what mood I'm in as to what term I'm going to be using. So that's all it is. Now, if you're here, my guess is you've already gone through the CRM Online 2015 Management and Configuration and or you've gone through Dynamic CRM Installation and Configuration and now you want more. You're thirsty for more knowledge on customizing and configuring Dynamic CRM. And guess what? We have a lot of customizations and configurations that we're going to discuss as we go through this course. If beyond this course you need to reach out to me, down on the bottom left-hand side is my Twitter handle. It's Brian Alderman. And you can also find me on LinkedIn, as well as my email address being brian.alderman at cbtnuggets.com. So feel free to email me as well. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to discuss as we go through this course. So I'm picturing you connected to CRM, whether it be online or on-prem, and that's the cool thing about this course. It's all applicable to either environment, whether you're in the online environment or you have an on-prem installation of CRM, this is going to work for you. So it's a two-for-one, but we're not going to charge you any extra. But shortly after you roll it out, it may not meet your organization's needs. So that's why we're here. And that's why you're here to figure out what you can customize. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin just with an introduction to customizing and configuring. And I'm going to introduce the three main processes available in CRM that may need customizations. Of course, we're going to be concerned about locking content down. So we're going to talk about security roles or building that security model. And also towards the end of the course, we're going to talk about applying granular security permissions. So security is not taken lightly because there is a ton of data that's stored in CRM. We're going to introduce and create a new business unit. And then we're going to look at how we add changes or make changes to CRM. And we do so using solutions. We're going to begin by creating a solution and we're going to spend a lot of time in this course inside that solution. Within the solution, we have several entities. We're going to create our own entity, and we're going to look at customizing that entity. That's where it's a combo of configuring and customizing, because we're going to create a custom entity, and then we're going to configure it. We may find we need to add some additional fields. Well, we're going to talk about the field types that you can add, and then we're going to talk about the relationships between those fields and even between entities. We're going to look at customizing our forms. Our end users may be asked to enter information and we may have to customize the form because all of the information is not there. And that brings us back to adding additional fields because we may need additional information for our organization. We want some sort of validation as we're adding content or working with content in CRM, and we can do so using business rules. We may not want to filter through thousands and thousands of records, so we can create custom views, so that way when we go into an environment, we can look at the content that we're most concerned with. And pictures are worth a thousand words, especially for upper management. They tend to like pictures versus trudging through tens of thousands of records. So we're gonna talk about creating charts, and then we're going to consolidate those charts into a single page. And that is called a dashboard. And that's going to coincide with your business processes, which we'll talk about as well. So as you can see, we have a lot to go through as we're looking at customizing and configuring CRM, whether it be online or on-prem. In addition to this course, I want to provide you some additional resources for dynamic CRM. As you can see here, we have a half a dozen different links that you can access. The CRM team blog, support blog, CRM setup and administration is very helpful. We have some community videos available to us. If you're looking for documentation release history, we have a link to that. And we have several different knowledge base articles specific to CRM. So use these in addition to this course to help you deploy and configure CRM, as well as help you prepare for the associated MB2-707 exam. And speaking of exams, for those of you who may be interested in taking the associated exam, which is titled MB2-707, here are the categories that Microsoft has broken it down into. Nine of these guys. I don't think I've ever seen an exam in all of my years that has nine categories. But the good news, each of these categories are only a bit over 10 or 10-ish percent. So 
Not too, too much to worry about. But there's nothing here that we're not going to talk about. They have solutions. They have security. They have entities, fields, relationships. Those aren't the type that we have at home. Forms, views, charts and dashboards, and then business process flows and business rules. So we're going to cover all this so you'll be prepared for the real world. And for those of you that are interested in a certification, this should help you out as well. So take a look at the link that I've supplied at the bottom for additional information about the exam and more detail about the Microsoft exam process. Generally speaking, Microsoft Dynamics CRM is broken down into three functional categories, sales, service, and marketing. And the purpose of sales is to generate leads for prospecting and for qualifying. They're also responsible for managing opportunities and of course, they're responsible for managing and tracking communications service and the service here they're going to track issues as well as tickets that are associated with the customer they're going to be involved with managing services and resources which includes scheduling those resources and lastly we have marketing and this is where they perform the campaign planning as well as budgeting they also generate marketing list and they are responsible for the marketing campaigns. So as we're working through this course, we're gonna be working in these three general functional areas of sales, service, and marketing. But not to worry because they're associated with a business process. As an example, let's go ahead and take a look at the four steps involved with the sales business process. As you'll see, the sales business process has four stages. The first stage is labeled qualify. The second stage is develop. The third stage is propose, and the fourth stage is close. And in the first stage, labeled qualify, we're going to look at creating or editing leads, as well as turning that lead into an opportunity. In the second stage, which is develop, we're going to identify stakeholders as well as any competitors, and who in the sales team is going to be responsible for this opportunity, and we're going to create a proposed solution. Our third stage, labeled Propose, is where we present the proposal to our potential customer. And when everything goes hunky-dory, we're going to go to our fourth stage, which is Close. That's where we're going to fill the orders, as well as prepare the invoices, and then send any follow-up messages to the customer associated with this opportunity. So this is an example of a business process, and we're going to talk more about these later on in the course, but I wanted to get you familiar with areas that are involved with the sales business process, because throughout the course, we're going to spend most of our time within this process. I certainly hope you're excited to go through this course with me regarding dynamic CRM customizations and configurations. You took a look at the agenda so you know what's coming. There shouldn't be any surprises. Don't forget to check out those additional resources that I provided for you, which will be helpful both in the real world and for the certification process. And if you're looking to obtain your certification, check out the link that I provided that discusses the nine categories that you can expect to find on that exam. And remember, there are three functional areas of CRM, and that's sales, marketing, and services. And we have a general idea as what we can expect to occur within each of those functional areas. And then we drilled a little bit deeper into the sales business process because we're going to be spending so much time throughout the course within that particular functional area. Well, now that we primed the pump and we're ready to go, let's go ahead and move into our next nugget, which talks about the very important aspect of securing your dynamic CRM environment. I certainly hope this nugget was informative for you, and I want to thank you for viewing.